The Scandals of the Royal Family During the more than 70-year reign of Elizabeth II, the British royal family has been involved in several scandals. Some examples include the refusal to allow Princess Margaret to marry a divorced man in the 1950s and the allegations made against Prince Andrew. Princess Margaret and an Impossible Love Peter Townsend met Princess Margaret when she was just 14 years old, while he was being considered by King George VI for a position at court as a knight. Although the romance flourished, it remained a secret within the royal family. When it became clear in 1953 that the couple wished to marry, the queen asked them to wait a year, perhaps hoping that the passion would fade. Princess Margaret was the sister of Elizabeth II. Peter Townsend had already divorced when rumors began to circulate about a possible marriage to Princess Margaret. The queen's private secretary warned her to send him away, and she reluctantly agreed. Townsend was appointed as an heir attaché in Brussels for two years, but the romance did not end. The cabinet vehemently opposed the princess's marriage and decided that if she insisted on proceeding, a bill would be presented to deprive her of all her rights, privileges, and income. On October 31, 1955, after talking to Townsend and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Princess Margaret made a statement that would go down in history. I would like it to be known that I have decided not to marry Captain Peter Townsend. I have been aware that, subject to my renouncing my rights of succession, it might have been possible for me to contract a civil marriage. But mindful of the Church's teaching that Christian marriage is indissoluble, and conscious of my duty to the Commonwealth, I have resolved to put these considerations before others. We had come to the end of the road, Townsend wrote at the time. Our feelings for each other had not changed, but they were a burden to us that we decided, together, to let go. Ironically, within a generation, divorce was accepted in the royal family, Margaret herself divorced in 1978. Sarah Ferguson, the controversial ex-wife of Prince Andrew In 1985, Sarah Ferguson met Prince Andrew at a party held at Windsor Castle. After a public courtship, the couple married a year later. At the time, Andrew was a daring pilot in the Royal Navy and a frequent partygoer, earning nicknames such as the Playboy Prince in the tabloid press. Their lavish wedding at Westminster Abbey was followed two years later by the birth of their first daughter, Beatrice. Their second daughter, Eugenie, was born in 1990. Initially, Ferguson was very popular in the British media for her open and exuberant style. However, over time and with a husband frequently absent in the Royal Navy, she began to feel increasingly unhappy and struggled with constant media attention. Sarah Ferguson dedicated herself to charity work and began a series of children's books. However, newspaper headlines began to turn negative with reports of her facing financial problems and accusations about her relationship with male friends, especially her advisor. In 1992, the British media published photos of Brian allegedly sucking the toes of the Duchess. The scandal all but ended their marriage. In 1995, the BBC reported that Fergie, as she was known in the press, had accumulated over £4 million, $5.76 million, in debt. This led the Queen to take the unusual step of publicly cutting off her financial portfolio for her daughter-in-law. The following year, the Duchess lost her title when Prince Andrew's divorce became official. The following year, the Duchess lost her title when Prince Andrew's divorce became official. Princita Diana In 1995, Buckingham Palace faced a deep crisis after beloved Princess Diana made an explosive statement in an interview with the BBC about her marriage to Prince Charles and his relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles, whom he would later marry. Diana told journalist Martin Bashir, Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded, when asked if she thought Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of her marriage, which triggered an earthquake in British public life. 
At that time, Diana and Charles had already been separated for three years, but the interview had a huge impact and ultimately led to their divorce. During the 50-minute conversation, Diana spoke openly about her relationship with James Hewitt, her struggle with bulimia, her role in the royal family and her mental health, as well as mentioning her relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. The interview took the royal family by surprise, according to Charles Anson, the Queen's press secretary at the time, who told CNN that there wasn't much we could say. At one point in the interview, Diana expressed the desire to be the Queen of Hearts of the British people, although she knew she would never be Queen. It is worth noting that the interview recently returned to the center of debate after it was confirmed that the BBC journalist used deceitful methods to obtain the interview, and that the broadcaster covered up this fact for years. After the tragic death of Diana in 1997, the focus of public attention shifted to the royal family and their response to the loss of the people's princess. Queen Elizabeth II was criticized for her initial reaction, which many saw as cold and distant, and for the delay in lowering the flags to half-mast at Buckingham Palace. The popularity of the British monarchy dropped significantly after Diana's death and the royal family faced criticism for their reluctance to participate in public mourning. However, they eventually became involved in organizing the princess's funeral, and the queen made an emotional speech to the nation, honoring Diana and calling for unity in difficult times. Since then, the royal family has worked to maintain their popularity and relevance, with the rise of a new generation of royals, such as Prince William and Kate Middleton, and Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. However, the royal family's relationship with the press remains a complicated issue, with the media frequently criticizing and scrutinizing the personal lives of the royals. Harry in a nod, a uniform at a party. In his adolescence and youth, Prince Harry was involved in several public scandals. Perhaps the most notorious was in 2015, when a photo of him wearing a beige shirt and pants with a red nasd eye armband was published by the Sun newspaper. Harry had chosen this outfit for a party, and criticism quickly arose from lawmakers and Jewish groups, both in the UK and abroad. Rabbi Marvin Heer of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Los Angeles said it was unjustifiable for a member of the royal family to do this and called Harry's action a disgrace to England. In response, the prince admitted to making a mistake and apologized, saying, I'm sorry if I offended anyone. Three years before that incident, at the age of 17, his father sent him to a rehab clinic to warn him about the dangers of drugs after discovering that he had smoked marijuana and allegedly drank alcohol. Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein the scandal involving Prince Andrew and his relationship with convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein has rocked the British royalty in recent years. The accusations against Andrew came from Virginia Jufrey, who claimed to have been trafficked by Epstein and forced to engage in sexual acts with his friends, including Prince Andrew, when she was only 17 years old. She alleges that Andrew knew she was underage in the United States at the time. In 2019, Andrew gave an interview to the BBC in which he denied having had SEX.AL contact with Jufri, but did not express remorse for his relationship with Epstein and showed no sympathy for the banker's victims. The interview was widely criticized, and days later, Andrew retracted his statements. However, the consequences for Andrew didn't stop there. Over the course of three years, a civil lawsuit filed by Jufri led to the prince being stripped of his military titles and charity organizations. Additionally, Queen Elizabeth II removed his status as His Royal Highness, and he was forced to retire from public duties and to permanent exile. This controversy was one of the biggest scandals faced by the Queen in her last stage of reign. Andrew was one of the closest members of the royal family and his conduct raised concerns about the integrity and image of the British royalty. 
The decision to strip him of his titles and charity organizations was seen as a necessary measure to protect the monarchy's reputation and send a clear message that inappropriate conduct would not be tolerated. The departure of Harry and Meghan, the beginning of a cycle of painful revelations. In early 2020, Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, made the decision to step back from their royal duties. It was a move that shocked the royal family and generated a lot of controversy. A year later, in February 2021, the decision was formalized, Harry and Meghan would no longer be active members and would no longer have their honorary military appointments or royal patronages. But the big bomb that would shake the royal family was yet to come. A month later, Harry and Meghan, now freed from their royal ties, granted an explosive interview to Oprah Winfrey. During the interview, Meghan spoke openly about her emotional suffering and the treatment she received from the British press and members of the royal family. She revealed that she felt isolated and had even had suicidal thoughts. Harry also spoke about his troubled relationship with his father, Prince Charles, and his brother, Prince William. The interview generated great emotion and raised questions about the future of the British monarchy. During an interview with Oprah Winfrey, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan, revealed that at one point in her life as a British royal, she felt so isolated and lonely that she didn't want to be alive anymore. She claimed that she had to suppress her outspoken nature and give up her personal freedom. Additionally, she stated that she was not given access to her passport driver's license, or keys after joining the royal family and only received them back when the couple moved out. Meghan also spoke out against the notoriously harsh coverage by the British press, stating that there were often old-fashioned colonial undertones that were racist towards the couple. She also alleged that there were concerns and conversations within the royal family about the skin color of their son Archie before his birth. The interview was a shocking revelation that brought to light deep and disturbing issues about Meghan's treatment by the royal family and the media. Since then, there has been a wave of discussions and debates about racism and prejudice in Britain and around the world. Prince Harry, sixth in line to the British throne, expressed his concern about the culture of silent suffering within the royal family, but emphasized that the race of his wife, Meghan, and the abuse she suffered made the situation even more difficult for them than for other members of the royal family. During his interview with Oprah Winfrey, Harry revealed that he and Meghan had discussed their concerns about racial discrimination with members of the royal family, but none of them took a public stance in support of the couple. Harry believed that there were many opportunities for the palace to show some public support in the face of ongoing racial abuse in the press but that his family remained silent. However, no one from my family said anything. That hurts, he said in the interview. After the program aired, the royal family issued a statement expressing their sadness at learning that the past few years had been challenging for Harry and Meghan, and calling the allegations of racism concerning. Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah Winfrey unleashed a storm of controversy in Buckingham. The revelation of allegations of racism and abuse sparked a global discussion about the British royal family and its policies, as well as questioning the press coverage of the monarchy and its role in contemporary society.